the national government is in a very big rush to swear in Professor Kiture Kindiki. I say this because already Urupak has been booked for Kindiki swearing in, and even people like Moses Kuria have started to inspect the grounds to see if it's ready. Here's the tip. <laughs> now of course depending on the time you're watching this probably the swearing in is going on or it's concluded but I wish to ask this question, why the rush to swear in Kindiki? That's the basis of this video and without wasting any time, let's get after it. First reason, these guys are in a serious rush to overtake court proceedings. They already know that the impeachment is about to be historically overturned. There is that potential. And they're in a rush to get Kindiki installed before any court order can be given. His Otiende Omolo and Wetangula shamelessly conspiring in the National Assembly for all to see and hear. Just listen in to the speed that they are moving. Roll the tip. Honorable members, I know this is a serious moment in history. It is also a constitutional moment. I wholly agree with the Honorable Wanjala, Honorable Ruku, in terms of the mood of the House. However, Mr. Speaker, there are things we need to do for the record, not just for ourselves. Even as we speak, this whole process is being challenged in court. We need not allow any gap because so far from the start to now we have not allowed any gap. Let us not be in a rush to allow a gap. I beseech members, let us vote electronically. It does not take time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable members, let's not open debate on this. Electronic voting takes less than five minutes. I'm sure you know this. So since the house is nearly full, Let's have the division bell rung for just five minutes. Then we draw the bar, you log in, and we call out the vote. And uh, the majority leader and minority leader nominate one person each to act as tellers. Then with those who don't have cards, I said, you record at the table with the clerks. So again, they are in a rush to move faster than court orders can be issued. However, the courts are already ahead of them. A ruling was issued by Justice Chacha Muita blocking the swearing-in of anybody before 24th of October. So this will just be another illegal swearing-in like Raila's unless Chief Justice Martha Koome okays the swearing-in. She has the right to veto Chacha Muita. Now the second reason behind this rushed swearing-in is that the government is desperate to create an immediate avenue to punish Gashagwa. Already as we speak, 80% of the staff in the office of the Deputy President have been fired. Here's what Moses Kuri had to say about it on Twitter not too long ago, and I quote, 80% of the staff working in the office of the Deputy President were from Madira constituency. Tonight, they have all been sent on compulsory leave. Now that makes me wonder, what else could have happened that we don't know? Chances are already the security of the Deputy President has been withdrawn, the vehicles have been withdrawn, access to various offices and amenities has been withdrawn, his salary has probably been stopped, and even the little items he has in the various state lodges around the country and probably even his own residence in Karen have been packaged in a carton and shipped off to Madira. That is the kind of speed that these people are moving with. They want to impeach today, nominate Kindiki tomorrow, swear him in the next day as soon as possible by 9 a.m., by Sunday, he should be in his residence, so Rigadi should have cleared out. That's the kind of speed they're moving with. That's why you're saying these people have been fired. It is not true that 80% can be from Madira. 80% of staff in one office from Madira. That, <laughs> if at all that is true, then that is something they could have brought in the impeachment. What I believe is happening is that they're just creating space for Kiture Kindiki. This 20% that is left is just for the transitioning purpose. You know, you cannot fire everybody. There has to be a transition team. Now, once Kindiki settles, that 20% will also be snuffed out so that it's a clean slate. Now, based on the mood of the executive and the legislature, both in cahoots, here's what I see happening, even in the event that Kindiki is sworn in, but the judiciary still sees Gashagwa as the legitimate deputy president. Chances are those two arms of government will work together to see to it that Gashagwa has zero access 
to any of the rights and privileges that he's supposed to have as deputy president. It is similar to what Malala is going through. Believe it or not, as we speak, Cleophas Malala is the UDA Secretary General. That is according to the courts. But on paper, there is nothing. He's not getting a salary. He has no access to the UDA offices. If he dares go there, he will be stoned. All his vehicles were retrieved. He doesn't have a flag on his vehicle. The reason for the flag is the fact that the UDA SG is allowed to sit in full cabinet meetings, so he's just as good as a CS. So Rigadi might be in the same box, whereby the judiciary has declared you as the deputy president, the legitimate one, but you can't go to your residence in Karen. You can't go to your office. You can't go to a state lodge. You have no access to the National Security Council. You have no access to anything or anyone. Not even a PS can be seen with you because being seen with you is as good as being fired if you are currently in government. So those are the problems Gashago will have. But at the end of the day, those things are uh, just but a bonus. That is not what he needs. All Gashagwa needs is for the impeachment to be declared null and void. Not so that he can go back to office. If he can do that, well and good. But the main benefit there is that if the impeachment is overturned, in due time, people will not always hate Gashagwa, even those who hate him. Politics is like that. When you're in office, they hate you. When you leave, they love you. Look at Uru Kenyatta. He was called Mjinga. He was called all these things. Now he's a darling of the nation. They are saying better the drunkard. It will be the same for Gashago. He'll be impeached. Nothing will improve. We'll continue with Adani and all these things. Sooner or later, people will be saying, Rigathi was right. He was a truthful man. And at that point, he can get his uh, benefits back because the avenue had been created by the courts nullifying. The moment somebody somewhere in power has a soft spot for him, he can regain some of those privileges of a former deputy president, even though he's the rightful one, but some of those uh, benefits are worth having. But even greater than that, if the impeachment is overturned, he will have regained the right to vie for president in 2027 or deputy president. And now, if cleared, Gashagwa is likely going to deputize Kalonzo. For the first time in history, there will be a Kamba presidential candidate and the deputy is going to be from Lima, Kenya. That automatically locks President Ruto from achieving 50% of Mlima, Kenya votes. Because now for the first time, it will be Mlima, Kenya East versus Mlima, Kenya West. Both are very popular in their regions. So it will be 50-50 split in the middle. So the battlegrounds will be elsewhere. Who can carry the day in Western? Who can carry the day in the coastal region, in the northern region? Those are the things we'll be looking at in the next election. So an overturn of the impeachment does not necessarily mean the DP can get access to the various amenities that he used to have before. There is a very powerful system that will not allow him to do a victory lap. For him to be seen on top of his convoy, talking to people with the PA system and all that, they will feel like he's uh, flexing on them. For him to be calling press conference from his residence in Karen, they will feel like he's still flexing on them. So they can't allow that kind of embarrassment to be seen. So you can expect that even if the courts rule Gashagwa is still the DP, there will be some form of rebellion and illegalities. In which case, Kindiki will be committing treason. But who will arrest him? That's the question. <laughs> the immediate former CS of Interior, who will arrest him? The IG, the deputy IG, the director of intelligence, the DC, who? The machinery is there to keep him in power, no matter what the courts say. But at the end of the day, guys, like I said, the biggest victory here for Gashagwa is once it's overturned, he has the avenue now to deputize Kalonzo or vie for the seat himself. At the end of the day, guys, that's just my opinion. Do let me know your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read it and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for the video fuller, hit the subscribe button. You're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. All right, guys. Adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. 
by showing up each and every day to watch our videos. You encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.